is the B.C. Juvenile the kiss of death for a horse's triple crown chances. The primary Breeders' Cup couldn't have begun on a more hopeful note. The evening of November 10, 1984 was a lovely, sunny, warm day at Hollywood Park. The arrangement that had the same number of doubters as fans when the thought was initially proposed had accomplished its main goal. It united an extensive accumulation of the world's best steeds for seven titled boy races in one $10 million broadly broadcast four-hour bundle. There were overwhelming exhibitions. For example, Princess Rue near seven-length frolic in the B.C. Distaff, and additionally the three-horse thriller in the climatic B.C. Classic that can in any case start a civil argument among veteran spectators. Hollywood sovereignty was sprinkled among the horde of 64,254. Another time had unfolded in thoroughbred dashing, and the game at long last had a particular rich, fabulous stage to showcase its stars for the present day and coming years. No race exemplified that guarantee of a brilliant tomorrow superior to anything the day's first race, the $1 million Breeders' Cup Juvenile. It was won by Chief's crown, establishing his case to the Eclipse Award as the year's exceptional two-year-old male. Yet the race was additionally amazingly perceptive as far as what might happen in the spring classics and past. Boss Crown was favored in every one of the three legs of the Triple Crown and completed third in the Kentucky Derby, second in the Preakness and third in the Belmont Stakes. Later in 1985, he won the Traverse Stakes at Saratoga. Tanks Prospect, the runner-up in the BC Juvenile, won the Preakness. Spin the Buck, who was third in the Juvenile won the Kentucky Derby and Jersey Derby, beat more established stallions in the G1 Monmouth Handicap and was named 1985's Horse of the Year and Champion 3-year-old. It was a very propitious begin that started a 